Well, there's no doubt that the return of Kevin Rudd as Prime Minister has turned federal politics on its head. Those of us who were saying, I think quite correctly, that the election was a foregone conclusion now have to say that the election is very much a contest. The coalition would have to be favourites based on numbers and based on the polls we've seen. But who knows what the polls in coming days will show or the coming weeks. We don't know when the election date will be. There's a few points to make about some of the events we've seen over the past week. The date of the election. In my view, we should have fixed terms of parliament. We know when the date is. I think the nonsense of Prime Ministers or Premiers playing around with the date, trying to catch the other side off guard, trying to decide when it'll be, whether it'll be this month or next month or delayed. Uh, this nonsense, I thought we put it behind us, certainly at the state level we had, and we had an election date announced earlier this year, fixed terms will be much, much better and four-year terms will be much, much better. But we've got the situation we have at the moment and who knows, the election date will be announced. There's also a lot of talk about uncertainty business uncertainty because of not knowing the election date and not having the election. That is really overcooked. But the reason there is uncertainty now is that until a couple of weeks ago, we knew there'd be a change of government in mid-September because Julia Gillard was leading the Labor Party. Now it's not so clear what sort of parliament will be produced when we finally have the election, whether it will be a change of government, whether it'll be a very tight parliament, whether it'll be a parliament where Labor is in opposition, but only by a margin of a few seats which will make the contest and what happens in the Senate much more open in terms of what Tony Abbott can and cannot do if he becomes Prime Minister. And then we have the stunt that Kevin Rudd engaged in this week where he went to the press club and uh, went through the exercise of challenging Tony Abbott to a debate and Tony Abbott won't debate Kevin Rudd because he's a long way ahead in the polls and doesn't want to run any risks. Please, can we have a situation where when we get to the election campaign problem we have at least three debates between the leaders, three proper debates where they can talk about policy. If one thing has happened as a result of Kevin Rudd coming back and the polls tightening up, there'll have to be an examination first of all of what he's proposing, what his policies are, what he is going to do if he's re-elected as Prime Minister and make a very specific exposition of what those things are. And then on the other side, there has to be a very specific exposition of what they'll do. We know, for instance, on the National Broadband Network, they'll effectively keep the existing NBN, but they will uh, do a cheaper version of it to the home, which for many people will be very, very adequate, but essentially embracing the notion of a national broadband network. On the education reforms, which in New South Wales are a bipartisan issue, uh, both sides of politics agree they'll be a huge boon to schools, and really, if you take the politics out of it, this is crucial, these education reforms, that money is essential. And politics shouldn't come into play where the coalition is saying, oh, we won't endorse this because we don't want to give a tick to the other side. This needs to be spelled out. What will happen with those education reforms and the huge benefits that will come from the money that will pay for specialists in some of these disadvantaged schools? We need to know all of that. On climate change, what's Kevin Rudd going to do with the carbon tax and perhaps a shift to the ETS? And can we have Tony Abbott explain how his direct action plan will work? And we need a bit more detail on that. So there's a whole range of areas where both sides of politics really aren't spelling out what they do after the election. Now the election's a contest. Let's start to hear the detail and have some debates and some proper analysis of what they're both offering when the election comes, whenever that might be, because at the moment, on both sides, there's a big blank sheet of paper.